humbled and elated that, uh, that Kit Bond, our senior senator, has chosen to, to publicly endorse my candidacy for governor. I think uh, there's, there are very few who have served this great state in, in public office who know Missouri like Kit knows, who loves Missouri like Kit does. And so to have his endorsement uh, is uh, it's an honor. Uh, I'm going to work as hard as I can to be worthy of that endorsement. And uh, we're continuing to build support. And we move on from here. Endorsements matter to anyone besides political reporters and people inside the convention <laughs> hall. I mean, do you think they have any effect on an election? Well, I, I, endorsements don't vote, obviously. And just like you know, the number of signs one has or the number of ads one has on television, on KY3, for instance, uh, but, but what it does is help set the stage, help to introduce me. I mean, again, as you all have written, and uh, just one of the challenges of a congressional sitting office holder is to get acquainted with Missourians all across, all across the state. Uh, endorsements in that regard are very instrumental because uh, when the local state representative, or in this instance, uh, when this, this very strong figure of, of long-serving Missouri uh, public servant that chooses that he believes in this in this unique time, this unique special election, if you will, uh, that that I'm the better candidate. Uh, then I do think it, it carries a lot of sway with undecided Republican primary voters. Do you think this drives a, a further wedge or division between the Republican Party when the most senior member and the most prominent Republican is endorsing you and other people are endorsing your opponent? That's what elections are about, Jason, is that uh, you know, just as each Missouri Republican primary voter will have to choose in August who they want to be the nominee for our party, uh, there are different individuals, prominent individuals like Kit. Uh, there are pro prominent entities, uh, which I suspect uh, uh, in the coming weeks uh, we will get to have, hopefully, further discussions about uh, other groups that may weigh in on this, and I'm excited about that prospect. Uh, so this is about people picking their favorite candidate. And so as far as division, what I hope happens, and certainly in my remarks this afternoon, I understand the media attention that you all have given to Ron Paul, my colleague in Congress, and what's been happening here with credentials. Uh, but there really, I think, ultimately is going to be a lot of unity here at this convention. When you consider, and last night we heard a, a bit of it, uh, when you consider where our state was three and a half years ago and where we have come, and when you consider that we've done that under common sense conservative Republican leadership uh, by Matt Blunt in the governor's mansion, uh, I think there's much more that unifies us, Jason, that, that divides us here. And so we will get past this convention and what you all are reporting. And uh, even after the primary, if we stay focused on the challenges of our state and how to address those challenges, uh, stay focused on the Democratic nominee uh, and not necessarily snipe at one another, uh, that too will help make sure that, uh, that there are whatever divisions or, or necessitate going through a primary process, we can rally together and then march forward into November.